हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज दर्ड लेक्चर ऑन मकेनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मशीनिंग प्रोसेसेस एंड पर्टिकुलरली अबाउट दी फार्मेशन ऑफ द चिप्स एक्चुअली एज वी टोल्ड द ट्रेडिशनल मशीनिंग प्रोसेस इन वाल्स द रिमूवल ऑफ द मटेरियल इन द फार्म ऑफ द चिप्स ओनली सो स्टडी ऑफ द चिप्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ दी material deformation must be taking place now i am high writing certain things machining means there is a wedge shape tool that removes the material in the form of the chips so there is a tool which is wedge shaped for example this is this one you can see there is a clear cut wedge is there this is the cutting edge and there are two surfaces which are meeting at the cutting edge so it is a wedge shape tool so machining is basically it involves the removal of the material in the form of the chips actually okay chips are like material pieces so this is one chip so you are seeing that machining this one the process of chip formation in metal cutting is affected by a relative motion between the tool and the work piece achieved with the aid of a device called machine tool so machine tool is that device that which causes removal of the material which does machining for example lathe is a machine tool milling machine is a machine tool grinding is a machine tool so these are the machine tools and this is only a typical tool okay machine tool means there is a tool will cause relative motion between this one see i am putting this in my hand if i move it you know my hand can get cut also hmm. but i am not moving just i am keeping at one place then nothing happens so actually there should be relative motion between the tool and work piece that is the principle of machining the relative motion can be obtained by a combination of rotary and translational movements of either the tool or the work piece or both it can be translational motion my tool may be moving like this or sometimes the uh, work piece may rotate and tool is stationary like in lathe machine so that means there is a rotary motion there can be different type of combinations of the rotary and translational movement the kind of surface that is produced by the operation depends on the shape of the tool and the path it travels through the material how it travels you will get different type of surfaces now machining processes can be classified into single point tool operations in which there is one cutting edge effectively there is one cutting edge that is cutting those type of processes is there for example just see that this is a lathe tool here there is a cutting edge that is the main cutting edge primary it is mainly cutting the material although there is a very small Uh, participation of this age also that is secondary cutting age so very precisely in most of the lathe machine operations both the ages are participating but the primary operation is done by this so we can say that this is a single point tool operation these two ages are meeting at a point and this is a single edge so in examples are we can do turning suppose reduce the uh, Uh, diameter of a job by moving the tool we can do boring that means this tool can bore inside the hole okay that is also this one shaping in which the tool can reciprocate like this like this and you can cut the material and planing is also basically same as shaping there is also single point tool but instead of movement of the tool there is a movement of job but the relative motion is same so there is no problem so these are single point tool operations then there are multi point tool operations like milling there is a milling cutter in which number of teeth are there drilling typing which is make used for making the threads reaming which is used for finishing the hole harbing which is used for cutting off the gears and there can be broaching in which there are in a cylindrical tapered cylindrical surface there are number of 
pools and the depth of each pool in the material will be gradually increasing. Then there is a sawing, you know there is a saw by which we cut and there are number of teeth there. So, these are multi point tool operations. Then there are abrasive operations in which in fact very large number of abrasive particles are there. They are of random geometry and uh, random orientation. Examples are grinding, wrapping, honing, super finishing. These are the abrasive operations. So, in this uh, for example, you see in the figure there is a straight turning shown here. In this there is a tool and it is a this is primary cutting edge and this is secondary cutting edge. Primary cutting edge is cutting it is digging inside the material the work piece is rotating. So, it is a tangential velocity is there that gives the relative velocity there is a relative velocity between tool and job that is the primary motion and then simultaneously I am moving the tool also in the along the longitudinal axis of the job. So, this is a feed motion. Now, you have to understand one point that the that uncut chip thickness that means in one uh, go that whatever that chip thickness is there that is caused by the feed. Now, suppose suppose it is going point 0.2 mm per revolution. So, that means uncut chip thickness will be proportional to point 0.2. Now, okay, it may be multiplied by some angle that point we can later on understand, but this is the essential point not that the chip thickness is not equal to the depth of cut depth of cut is different you see the chip is cutting sideways. So, the chip width is basically is related to the depth of the cut whereas, the chip thickness is related to this thickness is how much feed motion is there that point has to be uh, understood many people confuse in that aspect they think that if I uh, increase the depth of cut my chip thickness will increase, but actually it is not so feed is having influence on that. Similarly, here straight boring is shown here also the tool is rotating here in a straight turning you are moving on the external surface of the cylinder here you are moving on the internal surface of the cylinder. So, otherwise you will think it is same feed motion is there tool is there and work piece is there. So, this process is also shown here is straight boring this can be straight boring can be performed either on a lathe machine or it can be performed on a boring machine also in a drilling machine also you can put that attachment. Then you just see the shaping here primary motion means the tool is reciprocating and some simultaneously in the crosswise direction we give the feed also, but the feed is intermittent in the lathe machine the tool is continuously moving, but here once one stroke is complete then little bit we move the tool towards the cross direction and then we get the feed. Here you can very well see that in this case also feed will decide that how much will be the chip uncut chip thickness uncut chip thickness and consequently the cut chip thickness and a cut chip thickness will be different from uncut chip thickness, but it will be a function of uncut chip thickness. So, you see that how much bite basically you have taken in the feed. So, suppose you have moved this much that means that much distance will be shown and depth of cut which is basically shown from here to here that is the depth of cut depth of cut means it is from here to here suppose this is this is depth of cut this will decide the width of the chip ok. So, that is uh, this one. So, you are getting the machine surface here and you, this is the work piece in the planing motion work piece is moving. So, primary motion is given by the work piece intermittent feed is given to the tool or work piece and then you are getting this type of shape. So, this will give uh, basically again the plane surface. So, you have got shaping you have seen planing this is now multi uh, tool operation it is not a single tool here multiple tools are there 
example is milling machine, it is a slab milling process, you see the number of teeth are there, no? it is a helical milling cutter, you have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I think about 10, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 teeth are there, they are cutting uh, direction of tool rotation is this that is giving the primary motion simultaneously you are giving the feed to the work piece and you are doing plane milling. Then there is a drilling uh, op uh, operation here there is a work piece then there are it is a twist drill there are two distinct cutting uh, edges are there this is moving and simultaneously you are giving feed in the downward direction to the drill this operation is also under the multi tools operation. Now, this is again another example of multi tool operation broaching. Here I am showing you a broached type of thing. Broaching machine is very much suitable for mass production. If you want to produce suppose thousands of internal gear, then broaching is the best process. It is very fast. Here you have got a broach tool. Now, you just see that the broach is of the cylindrical shape and but it is slightly tapered so that basically the radial depth of the um, uh, two cutting tools will be increasing gradually. So, initially you will take a small cut and then it will move then bigger amount of cut will be taken then more cut will be taken like that we will step by step we will remove the material this is the front view yeah, probably it is used to make the splines. So, front view is having in the shape of the spline. If you pass the bo broach once through that, so then you will be making one basically splined hole. So, here it is the geometry of the cutting um, uh, tool are shown. Here you are seeing that this is the wedge shape tool. So, this is a wedge shape this one cutting tool and then here you are cutting and then after that um, this point is there it will it is cutting and this is one surface and this is another flying surface this is top surface is the rake, rake surface and then it is whole thing is cutting. So, here it is the depth is only uh, these are some clearances and some angles are set. Now, this is the work piece and tool simultaneously it is showing. So, this is depicting that how the basically the radial depth in the work piece will keep on increasing. That means, there is a tooth rise that is defined as a tooth rise that means, rise of the tooth. So, suppose here you are taking h thickness cut here also this one cut. So, h plus h will become 2 h then it will become 3 h like that gradually the height is increasing this is these teeth points are not at the same level this is lower this is slightly up this is even up like that and then you can have roughing teeth and you can have finishing teeth this is the cutting direction and broached surface is shown you see that we have been able to make splines by means of this broaching tool. Okay, so, this is the broaching operation here in the machine you have to give only one motion that motion is given to the broach that means that tool and the feed is automatically obtained because of the different heights of the teeth. Okay. So, now so any machine tool in general provides two kinds of relative motions one is the primary motion it is responsible for the cutting action and it absorbs most of the power required to perform the machining action. So, there is a primary operation for example, in a lathe machine primary motion is what that surface velocity of the job which is rotating because it is that is the primary motion if it does not rotate you will not be able to cut. No? Feed motion is just to take more raw material into its grab and then cut is it not because if you keep on rotating at the same location then material is already machined. So, you move a bit. So, secondary motion or feed motion it may proceed in steps like in the shaper machine we do in the shaper machine cutting tool moves like this and after that some it comes back 
then we impart a bit feed here in this direction, then again move, then it comes back, again we about provide the feed in this direction, move like that. So, this process happens that is intermittent feed or it can be continuous as you know in the lathe machine when the job rotates then simultaneously tool is also moving. That is why in the lathe machine feed is also specified in terms of millimeter per revolution, this much millimeter per revolution. And in the uh, shaper machine we specify the feed in millimeter per stroke, this much millimeter per stroke. So, uh, the feed motion may proceed in steps or continuously and it absorbs only a fraction of the total power required for machining. So, it also takes some power, but compared to the primary motion power it is very small. When the secondary motion is added to primary motion, machined surfaces of desired geometric characteristics are produced that is the basis actually whatever you shape you want to produce that is because of these combination of these two motions. So, we define one concept very general concept so that everything can be done in a generalized way we define the concept of generatrix and dielectrix. Generatrix means the line generated by the primary motion is called gen generatrix. Okay, what type of line you are generating because of the primary motion and dielectrix means the line representing the secondary motion that is feed motion these are called the dielectrix. For example, suppose generatrix is also a straight line like in a shaper machine it is tool is moving in a straight line and feed is also in a straight line. So, dielectrix means it is getting directed also in the transverse direction like this and here also it is going like this. In that case it is like this dielectrics is this, generatrics is this, it results plane surface, you get a plane surface. Is it not? Two lines can make a plane, so it is you got the plane. In the lathe machine you see generatrics is a circular because basically tool is moving relative to the job in a circle. Right? Suppose, suppose in a state of the lathe uh, work piece you decide that my job will rotate uh, sorry in a state of the job you fix the job tool will rotate that is essentially the same thing then that tool will cover a circular path. Right now what is happening tool is stationary but the raw material itself is rotating but it is covering a circular path. So, generatrix is a circle and dielectrics means this is tool is moving in a straight line. So, dielectrics is a line combination of a circle and line um, will make a cylindrical surface. If you stack number of generatrics uh, on in the dielectrics direction you get a circular a cylindrical surface. Similarly, now you can of course, you can make free form surface complicated surface also by providing different type of motion. See I am having generatrix straight line, but dielectrix I have given in the curved fashion. It is a curved line not a straight line. So, I have got curved type of profile may be ruled surface or na, that type of thing. So, any type of shape surface can be produced by the combination of the motions of generatrix and dielectrix. Now, let us concentrate on machining with single edge tools. Very idealized form of a tool typical tool I have shown it is suppose there is a tool you might have seen a tool can be anything that suppose in the garden you also use lot of tools suppose you have for digging the soil hmm, you can have any typical you can have a spade hmm, by that spade you cut the soil or any type of this one you can have chisel, but typically there is this solid metallic part which can be held either in your hand or in some other holder this portion is called shank. In this, this portion is basically shank. Shank is not participating in the cutting, shank is only for holding. Okay. Then you have got some cutting edge, this is a sharp cutting edge I have shown. In this case I have shown 0 nose radius, in general we will provide some small amount of nose radius also. 
never you will have a uh, tool which is perfectly sharp because if you make perfectly sharp and assume that node radius is zero then the contact area becomes zero and infinite amount of stresses will produce so this is a theoretical concept no infinite stresses can be there and immediately but it will produce more amount of force so it is good that you should have sharp cutting edge but if it is too sharp then automatically it cannot be sustained it will wear out soon na? because stresses will be produced large amount of stresses so material will be weared out and uh, you will get all material deformation will be there so but here ideally i have shown very small node radius so zero node radius this is the cutting edge and that will be digging inside the material and then material will be removed so this way you will be getting now here you can have suppose tool is moving in this direction so perpendicular to the cutting velocity you have got this type of that one plane okay this one reference plane and from this so this is the vertical plane tool is moving horizontally and this is the surface on which the chip will be flowing you see that if you take this tool and you start digging in a soil the soil will flow on this surface which is called rake surface so rake surface is there and this angle is called rake angle rake angle is important you have to provide sufficient amount of rake angle on the surface that is what so that the there should be easy movement of that you imagine that i am cutting like that if i do not provide this type of angle there cannot be proper movement of that so you require less amount of force if you increase the rake angle in this direction less amount of force will be required but then if you do like that then this portion becomes very thin and it becomes weak so if you increase the positive rake angle the tool becomes weak and this is the basically the rake angle it is in this direction it is considered positive if it is zero rake angle means surface is totally vertical and negative means the surface is in fact leaning like that so if you can imagine that if i cut it like that and my surface is also leaning like that then i will be requiring large amount of force will be required because you have to compress and you have to do that so that is negative rake angle then here opposite to that rake surface this side here in this side bottom there is a surface which is called flank surface flank means side is it not we say that this person is flanked by other person that means he is in the side so flank is on the bottom that is basically uh, if if i don't provide any inclination of that it will rub the machine surface so we provide very small amount of angle and this is called some people called it flank angle some call it a relief angle because we give some relief to it and some call it clearance angle because we give clearance so that it becomes clear so this angle is here i have denoted by alpha and this is called basically the flank angle so figure is showing a wedge shaped tool now there are two type of cutting operations one is the orthogonal cutting and another is the oblique cutting orthogonal cutting can be considered as two dimensional cutting here what you are seeing that there is a tool wedge shaped tool there is a rake angle this is the tool and this tool is moving in the horizontal direction now there is a in this direction you see that cutting edge now cutting edge is totally perpendicular to the velocity uh, direction velocity is in this direction and cutting edge is also in the horizontal plane but it is in the perpendicular direction and uh, then you are having flank relief angle is shown gamma is shown direction of primary motion in the cutting direction is this machine surface you are getting behind and work piece material is getting removed in the form of chip whatever comes out we are calling that as a chip because its shape is like chip whatever chip you eat it is the same type of like you have potato chip so it is in the form of that type of chip so this is this one this one is the chip width okay width of the chip and this is the chip thickness 
right? Cutting edges are so shown here. Cutting wedge is basically this complete wedge, and this chip thickness has come, but it has come after removing some material. Then only it has come. So that thickness, which has not been yet cut, that means it is uncut. But ultimately, this will become a chip that is called uncut chip thickness. Basically, it is a chip, but it has not taken the birth in the form of chip yet. So that is why it is called uncut chip thickness. And width depth of the cut is shown here. This is uncut chip width. Uncut chip width is also shown. Then this is work surface, and this is work piece. So there are number of features here in the orthogonal cutting. One is the head. The cutting of the tool, cutting edge of the tool, is perpendicular to the direction of the cutting velocity. Second is the head. Cutting edge is wider than the work piece width, so you see the cutting edge is extending up to here, whereas the work piece is, you know, up to this one only, and it extends beyond the work piece on either side. Then the width of the work piece is much greater than the depth of the cut. So here width is much greater. Here width is much greater, and width is very small. C T is small, T G O is small, W G O is big. So basically, there is no much deformation in the width direction. Only it is deformation is in the thickness direction. So we can say it is a plane strain type of situation. The chip generated flows on the rate right face of the tool with chip velocity perpendicular to the cutting edge. Chip velocity is perpendicular to the cutting edge. Here it is going like this, and the cutting force acts along x and z direction only because. Width dial is very big, and this is a free surface. This side, so there is not any force in that width direction. Instead, it is only in x and z direction. So it can be represented in a two-dimensional way. And this is what we have told about orthogonal cutting operation. Now, in oblique cutting, now you can easily understand. Here, just we little bit tilt the tool so that the cutting edge. Is not now perpendicular to the uh, cutting velocity. Cutting velocity is in the same direction horizontal, but the edge is now inclined. So cutting edge of the tool is inclined at an inclination i with the normal to the cutting velocity vector. Normal to the cutting velocity vector is y because cutting velocity is in x direction. Normal to that direction is y. So you are having that inclination angle i. And in the plane of the rake face, now here, uh, now now what happens with the normal to the cutting velocity vector i? That is inclination angle. Chip generated flows on the rake face of the tool at an angle approximately equal to i with the normal to the cutting edge in the plane of the rake face. So normal to the cutting edge may be somewhere, but it will move. Chip will move in the inclined direction. That is i. Stabler showed this relation that more or less whatever is the inclination angle, that angle chip will make in the motion on the rake face also. That means suppose inclination angle is I, chip will also make that I angle on that surface. So cutting force acts along all the three directions in this case along x, y, and z. That is oblique cutting. Most of the cutting operations are basically oblique. You have lot of Advantages here. You see here more effective area of the oblique uh, cutting edge is there, and the the forces are distributed here, and that is why oblique cutting is preferred. And orthogonal cutting more or less it is idealization. Many processes will not have orthogonal uh, cutting. So, but we generally try to understand orthogonal cutting because it is easier to understand. Then I am trying to discuss what are various types of chips. Depending on the properties of the material and cutting conditions, you can get various type of chips. For example, you can get continuous chips, very continuous, long, particularly in ductile materials when all they are machined at somewhat high speed. Then you get uh, this type of chips. You see that I am showing you some chips. These are Aluminium mach uh, material machined, and you have seen that how big this chip is. That 
this these are entangled they are very difficult to handle also although this shows good amount of cutting because you are getting so this one chip you see that how long it is this one and it has become in the form of a spiral it got winded up and this chip is in this one this is that much length if i open it i can show it got broken here see see even this much is that big so you can imagine that how much they can cause sometimes problems to operator they can actually uh, uh, get entangled in the tool so these type of chips are there they are continuous chips they are called type 2 chips then we can get continuous chips with built up edge that means there can be adhesion of the chip material here in the tool due to high pressure and temperature on the tool itself you can observe that there will be some built up type of edge will be there these are not desirable because sometimes it gets stuck and then it gets broken so this deteriorates the job quality and also may be uh, sometimes the wear of the tool so this is called type 3 chip then there are discontinuous chips discontinuous chips are you know that of very small fragments you see very very small perhaps it will be difficult for you to see also from the distance they are called discontinuous chip small small chips they get broken these are called type 1 chip so continuous chip means this type of chip is common for most ductile materials namely aluminium copper generally obtained under steady state condition so there is not much fluctuation in the cutting force etc that's why it quality may be better of the machine surface so conditions that promote the formation of continuous chips are high cutting speed is kind of speed means basically cutting speed v then low feed feed is generally low then large rake angle because so that there is a easy large positive rake angle a smooth flow of the material and sharp cutting edge that means when there is zero nose radius and low amount of friction that also promotes the formation of the continuous chips okay now continuous chip with built up edge you are seeing that here there is some built up edge some portion gets adhered to the chip also this is the feed under certain conditions of temperature and pressure at the tool chip interface the resistance to relative motion between the chip and the tool is so severe that instead of chip sliding over the rake face a layer of metal is ruptured from the chip okay so high resistance at the chip tool interface quickly removes the protecting layer from the rake face and this newly exposed surface and the freshly cut chip have affinity to each other and it will get welded even if you have got coating but that coating will get removed and then there will be welding of the chip with the tool surface the presence of welded chip material further increases the resistance to flow uh, of the chip resulting in the formation of additional layers of chip material on the rake face the process continues and the resulting pile of the chip material on the tool face is known as built up edge so you get lot of here built up edge type of things your nose also effective nose radius may also increase you may get this type of phenomena the factors which influence the formation of built up edge are speed of the machining that is important during machining with high speed the time available for adhering micro chips will be less and formation of built up edge can be neglected so formation of built up edge can be neglected that is why that is uh, uh, speed helps in eliminating built up edge then uncut chip thickness as the uncut chip thickness increases the force induced during machining will increase which will increase the power consumption and heat generation in machining process hence the chances of adhering micro chips will be increased that means if you increase the uncut chip thickness in that case there will be built up edge formation back rake angle reduction in back rake angle will increase the forces in machining and heat generation and hence the chances of formation of built up edge will increase then use of cutting fluids during machining operations if the cutting fluids are used whatever the heat is generated during machining that will be carried away by the cutting fluid so that the heat available for adhering will be less 
and the formation of built up edge will be eliminated. In general, low cutting speed, high feed, and small rake angle are conductive to the formation of built up edge. Okay. So, built up edge has to be mostly avoided. Discontinuous chip, this type of chips are produced during machining of hard and brittle material like cast iron. If you machine cast iron, you will get small. Sometimes you will get chips in the form of small, it will look like a powder type of thing. So, discontinuous chips are also obtained during machining of ductile materials also. Sometimes, when conditions are such that the material is plastically deformed beyond the critical strain. So, sometimes you get for example, if the cutting speed is very low, high feed is there and small rake angle is there, then this favors the formation of discontinuous chips. You are seeing that schematic diagram. Here I am showing you know discontinuous chips. These chips are suppose they are fragmented. Mm, so, this is. So, it is giving just a summary of this one. You can get in standard textbooks like in GK Lal also this type of table. The factors that are likely to influence the formation of various types of chips about the material. Suppose material is ductile, more chances are that you will get continuous chips or you can get continuous chip with built up edge. If material is brittle, you are likely to get discontinuous chip. Then tool rake angle, if rake angle is large, you get continuous chip. If it is small, you may get disc uh, built up edge or if it is small then you can get discontinuous chip. Cutting edge if it is a sharp then you have chances of getting continuous chip. If it is dull then you may get built up edge and cutting conditions if speed is very high you get continuous chip. If it is low you can get built up edge or you can get discontinuous. If the heat is low then you get continuous chip. If it is high, you can get either built up edge or you can get discontinuous chip. Friction, suppose it is low, then this is continuous, and if it is high friction, then you get uh, discontinuous chip, uh, rather, you get continuous chip with built up edge. And cutting fluid, is, if it is efficient, it will cool the material, there will not be any welding, etc. So, you get efficient, you may get continuous chip, or you may get here. In this case, if the cutting fluid is poor, then you may get continuous chips with built up edge. Now, here uh, it is uh, shown here that you are seeing that that double turning. This is work of my PhD student Al Kalidasan. He worked on double tool turning. So, what he did that he cut simultaneously. There is a this is a lathe machine on which on the lathe machine, lathe machine is not shown here, but three G jaw chuck is shown in which the job is held and there is a front cutting tool which is moving in this direction, rear cutting tool is moving in another direction opposite side, this is in the tail stock, this is tail stock and there is a dead center here, this is not rotating, this is fixed and the tools are separated. So, you see simultaneously it is uh, doing cutting. Suppose it has taken 2 mm depth of cut, it another one has taken 2 mm depth of cut. After both the tools have passed, then your depth of cut has become 4 mm. So, he did lot of study even on the chip shapes, he took the micrograph, he took that scanning electron microscope pictures, some of these pictures are shown here. It is the back surface of the generated chip from the front tool and from the rear cutting tool. In fact, he took the feed quite large 0.24 mm per revolution is a high feed and 1 mm depth of cut. Here you are seeing that he got the formation of the cracks also here and there are streak lines that means due to rubbing of the chip you get streak type of some parallel marks those are called streaks. Here also cracks streaks and some micro pores have been shown here. And then three surface of the generated chip is also shown here. He is finding some segments here. These are the chip segments that means they are cutting here. So, this is uh, this one he observed in both the cases and then chip segmentation is shown nicely here. 
this is the he is getting SATU type of some what chip depending on the conditions. So, that this type of shapes are shown. Here one thing I have not shown, but we can also get sometimes this type of effect that actually fall, uh, formation of a chip you need minimum undeformed chip thickness, minimum uncut chip thickness. If that is not there, then chip will not form instead a small triangular portion that should have been removed is left and this is called the spine GP fill due to this surface roughness increases. So, you get spine GP fill effect. So, that thing you can observe sometimes that suppose you are doing machining at a very low feed, at very low feed uncut chip thickness will be very small, uncut chip thickness will be very very small. So, there will not be proper cutting action, proper shearing will not be there, tool may rub against that and it may cause little bit plastic deformation, then you will get the surface finish which will be very poor. And then as you increase the feed, then cutting action becomes proper, then you get a good surface finish. And after that, after a certain point, then if you further increase the feed, then the surface roughness uh, increases due to uh, geometric effect. So, usually we understand people think that surface if I want to get a good surface finish my feet should be low, but here I want to point out that if you are doing the machining of particularly ductile material then if you cut at a very low feed na, say 0 0.02 mm per evolution you may get spine GP fill uh, type of phenomena and your output may be counter productive. So, that is what that point has to be this one we have seen that, but suppose you are doing at say 0 0.08 mm per evolution or 0 0.1 mm per evolution that is fine. After that if you further increase the feed then the surface roughness will deteriorate as will be also discussed in somewhat later class. Now, here I am showing diagram surface roughness you know, you know that surface is not smooth you know sometimes surface height is more sometimes surface is height is low. So, we measure surface roughness measurement things we will discuss more in detail that what are various measures of surface roughness, but in a common sense way you understand that what do we mean by smooth surface and what do we mean by rough surface. Now, sometimes you machine by a tool and you observe that surface roughness of that particular tool is very uh, means of uh, with that particular tool you get a very poor surface roughness, but sometimes you get very good surface roughness. So, here it is shown that suppose in the beginning I am having cutting speed is very low, surface roughness is high, may be discontinuous chips may be forming and then as you increase the cutting speed then there will be continuous chip formation will be there then the surface roughness reduces. But in this region in middle region built up edge formation may be there that is why the surface roughness is again increasing this is this may cause built up edge formation. Now, if you have reached a particular cutting speed after that further increase in the cutting speed does not provide sufficient time for the built up edge formation and that is why with increasing cutting speed now the surface roughness starts decreasing. So, that is why you are getting and you keep on increasing the cutting speed till your uh, limit of the machine then usually the if you keep on increasing then the built up edge formation will not be there and it is observed that the surface finish is improved. Maybe if you increase too much then the surface finish may deteriorate also maybe vibrational aspect may come, but in general that we get high cutting speed. So, this is a good sign that means we want more productivity also and we want more surface uh, finish also good surface finish and with high production rate. So, it is better to operate in this region here also you can get a very small surface roughness at somewhat low speed, but you will be not getting high production rate here you will be getting high production rate also that is what it is shown here. Then variation of temperature with cutting speed. Now, this is a cutting speed is increasing 
then you see that the temperature will increase. Temperature at the cutting uh, interface that means the tool work interface. Now, that is another thing that how much work piece temperature will increase, how much the chip temperature will increase and how much will be the temperature at chip and uh, work piece interface, how much temperature will be at chip tool interface, these things are different. Most of the heat is carried away by the chips. So, maybe even if you increase the cutting speed, maybe that much increase of the work piece temperature may not be observed in proportionate. So, that is why it is not a linear curve, it gradually reduces at, at, high, at high cutting speed you see more or less temperature is not significantly changing with the cutting speed. Why? Because most of the heat although more heat is now generated, but that particular heat will be taken away by the chips. So, you get more or less same type of things, but in the beginning if you are cutting speed is low. So, if you increase the cutting speed more amount of power is generated which in turn increases the uh, uh, temperature of the workpiece because power is dissipated in the form of the heat. Mostly if you do any plastic deformation then about 95 percent of the plastic deformation power that will go as a heat and only about maybe 5 percent will increase the internal energy of the workpiece that is this one. So, variation of temperature with cutting speed has been shown here. This classification of chip was earlier done by Ernst in 1938. Ernst and Merchant, we will talk much about Merchant circle. These people in a way started force calculation, some simple mathematics of the chip formation in the around 1940s. So, they are in, in that sense they are pioneer. The, to Ernst defined the chips in three categories type 1 means discontinuous chip, type 2 continuous or ribbon type of chips. You see that this is a ribbon type of chip, this is like a ribbon, no? this is. So, this is this is called continuous chip and then there is a continuous chip with built up edge that means it also forms built up edge that thing is there, but we have not shown here it will not be visible from that long distance. So, this is what that thing we have not brought here, but you have seen the figure already. There is one good paper by Vyas and Sa, which was published in a semi journal of manufacturing science and engineering in 99, 1999 volume 121. It is about 10 page paper in which he has classified the chips into two types. One is the steady state continuous chip like this and other is basically the cyclic chips. Three types of steady state chip formations are may be that very narrow linear shear zone that means when the chip is forming chip formation takes place like this like this. So, there is a and this material is there. So, this is a shear zone. So, that means cutting tool is here this is the tool, tool is producing the chip, but the chip is getting sheared, but along a narrow zone. And then there can be other type of phenomena in which there is you get a pie shaped shear zone. Both of these are produced by shard, that means shear zone may be like this, extending from here like in the form of a chip, uh, the pie. Then chips with more extensive shear zone and some subsurface deformation of the finished surface. That means, you can have this zone can extend and there can be some deformation on this, this surface also this type of phenomena can be there. So, these are things we one can study in detail. There are four types of cyclic chips, discontinuous chips they are called cyclic because one by one, one particle has been broken, another particle broken, another one has done. Then wavy chips you can get waviness and then chips produced with built up edge. Then you can get sawtooth type of chip like a sawtooth you get. This is observed that is a fourth type of in fact chip that is observed they were observed in 1954 first during machining of titanium alloys. You know titanium material is very important 
because of its very favorable property, it is good for low space industries. Compared to its weight, its strength is more. During diet machining, it uh, and it uh, it is basically somewhat hard and brittle material. So this is when hard and brittle materials are produced during high speed and feed. Then you get short tooth type of chip. So short tooth chip like this one typically schematic diagram I have shown here. They are also called segmental chips. An increase in cutting speed has generally two opposing effect. Strain rate increases. Uh, increase enhances short tooth formation because as you know the strain rate increase will have tendency to increase the flow stress of the material more difficulty in cutting but the thermal softening has a positive effect it reduces it short tooth chip causes great variation in cutting forces forces and chip flow speed at tool phase because it is, it is short tooth so chip thickness is changing here, here. So, sometimes the force will be high, sometimes the force will be low. So, then there will be fluctuation. So, therefore, short tooth chip causes vibration. So, therefore, these chips cause vibrations and they increase tool wear, they increase surface roughness, they have to be avoided, means you have to choose those type of condition that short uh, uh, tooth chip should not be generated. Sometimes you can comment about the uh, condition of the machining operation by just by observing the chips. In future, with intelligent sensors, one can make those type of devices which can adaptively adjust the parameters based on the observation of the chips. That is why it is important to study that what type of different type of chips are there. So, short tooth chips are generated in machining of titanium, in austenitic stainless steel, and nickel alloys. So, sometimes when we get this type of chips, na, they are creating a lot of problem, they get entangled, they can reduce this workpiece. So, although continuous chips are very good and it is a uh, good sign we should aim at that, but if they are very long, then they will create problems. So, I want a continuous type of chips, but I do not want that long, I want a small, a small. So, can they be broken? Of course, they are brittle they sometimes can be easily broken also that is what this one. So, we try to keep we need chip blockers. Chip blockers can be put on the tool. Why we need to block the chips? It is because of the for the safety of the operators to improve the surface finish and to ease chip disposal. These are the three main important things safety of operator because operators and uh, it can come then improve the surface finish because otherwise these long chips they can again integral with the work piece it can spoil the work piece surface and also we need easy chip disposal you see that even handling of these things is also very difficult whereas these type of small chips we can easily take and we can handle so that is why Kama shaped chips are small closed coiled helical type chips are the best from handling point of view and all these things. So, how do we break the chips? We can do self breaking that means the chips generally by adjusting the cutting parameters we adjust the cutting parameters in such a way that the chips can break naturally that means by or by striking the job or tool that means the chips have come but they will come and they will hit against this one and the hard chips will break or suppose the chip is going and it is very hot suddenly the coolant jet is also falling on that that coolant jet will cause sudden quenching and cracking will take place and the chip will break. So, that type of thing can be done, but we sometimes we use forced breaking that means we can put the chip breakers. So, they can be in build type that means on the tool surface rake surface we can make a small groove on the rake surface or we can make a small step that type of thing can be done that which called in build type or we can clamp some projection type of thing here that is clamp type of chip breakers it can be a, a fixed or it can be adjusted also depending on the chip geometry. We can design chip breakers if we have idea about chip type and their geometry then we can design the chip breaker that how much height of the chip breaker will be best so that it can be clamped here and it can break 
you see here also there is a small amount of groove and suppose the, this is the rake surface and now what may be happening that the chip is going like this and here suddenly it may be breaking actually. So, that means this is possible that here it can break. So, it is a basically inbuilt type, but we can have clamp type of chip, chip breakers also these are. Now, there is a one paper which was published in advances in mechanical engineering very recently 2016. It is open access journal and under the creative common license we can also use it for any purpose we can take the photograph and we can display. So, I have taken something from this paper. In this paper he has done finite element analysis of chip breaker geometry in turning process. You know finite element is a good technique by which you can find out stress distribution, temperature distribution it is a numerical technique. Nowadays number of packages are there like ANSYS, ABACUS many packages are there in that we can do finite element analysis. So, he has try to find out that which type of these authors try to find out which type of chip breaker is good. It is schematic of the 6061 aluminum alloy before cutting and it is cutting with the chip breaker. So, you see because of the chip breaker that the chips are getting broken here. And then next in TT diagram of the different chip breakers without chip breaker two is like this then you can have square chip breaker here or we can have elliptic type of chip breaker is there. It is this one I hope this is visible these are just a photograph, but here in a bigger way it is shown that without chip breaker in a PM model they have taken a square chip breaker and they took the elliptical chip breaker. And after that they have obtained effective stresses of different type of chip breakers. What do we mean by effective stress? Effective stress is the combined measure. In the last class I told you about the three principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. So, and we said that one yield criteria was there sigma 1 minus sigma 2 square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square this is 1 mix criteria plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 square is equal to 2 sigma y square. So, in a way that material will drastically deform if this condition is achieved or I can say that sigma y is basically under root half and then I can write sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square. So, this thing on the right hand side can be carved as equivalent or effective stress. That means, it is the combined effect. Combinedly, when this quantity becomes equal to sigma y, then the yielding will take place. Like that you can have, this is called one misses equivalent strain. Here they have really not mentioned that what is effective stress in this diagram. Maybe in the paper they might have written that we they have used one misses type of effective stress. Similarly, there can be other measures of that. So, this is effective stress of different chip breakers has been done. Then they have obtained this is the stress effective stresses have been plotted. These are the control type of things where there are more stresses that is shown here. I am just showing these type of things that you can understand that you can apply scientific principles and mathematical techniques to your machining processes. And here effective stress of a squared chip breaker has been shown. It is 840 here slightly reduced and then again it reduced with elliptical type of thing here you are getting 810 and then different type of chip breakers effective strain diagram has been obtained just like we define effective stress combination of the stresses we give one major similarly effective strain is also defined that has been plotted here and effective strain without chip breaker then effective strain of squared chip breaker and this is elliptical chip breaker and this is the temperature of different chip breakers. You see without chip breaker you are getting this type of distribution. This is on the uh, without in bottom this side and here you are getting squared and with elliptical shape you are getting really not much uh, difference in the temperature 
may not be that much significant and uh, temperature of tool without chip buckle is shown here and here 140 maximum bar here 135 more or less it is same temperature of turning tool without chip buckle in the cutting tool they have shown 36.1 then it is 40 with squared chip buckle and then elliptical chip buckle this bar is shown then they are showing real simulation diagram for different type of chip buckles without chip buckle and square chip buckle and elliptical chip buckle. So, chip buckle it appears that is not basically reducing the wheel per se and but may be that that in detail one has to study this paper, but this has been demonstrated here that people are trying to apply the fundamental principles of the science and they are trying to understand that is what is happening inside the material, how the chip is getting formed and how we can design efficient chip workers, all these type of things you know people are studying. So, this much will be for today. Thank you.